and we are off painting the first of the new uh, Games Workshop Dark Elf release figures starting off with the Sisters of Slaughter and I went into this project not really knowing exactly how I wanted to paint them I mean uh, the concentration of course is mainly on the flesh on these figures they're uh, half naked so um, it needed to be something special but I didn't know if I wanted to do pale or if I wanted to do a dark skin tone but um, I kind of ended up something in between so anyway we're starting out with my standard Panzer Ace Vallejo Panzer Ace Shadows Flesh mixed in with some Vallejo model color Rose Brown and it's about a 50-50 mix and this is just the the underlying base coat just to establish the uh, the uh, the edges of all the flesh tones and uh, bring up the flesh a bit the undercoat color because doing the lighter colors over the black is a bit difficult um, so just a coat of this and then we move on to the next step next comes just straight rose brown and we're doing a heavy dry brush with it because I do need to speed up this project as much as I can without losing detail and um, by dry brushing at this stage uh, we're still going to put more layers on top of it so the rough dry brushing isn't going to matter too much um, so this is a quick way to get the, the main undercoat on the model and still leave the, uh, the recesses with that previous uh, Shadows Flesh Rose Brown mix. The next layer to go on is the rose brown mixed in with a little Vallejo game color pale flesh and we're going to be repeating this several several times and um, I probably could have skipped that first layer of the shadows uh, flesh and the rose brown and just used a undercoat of rose brown and worked my way up from there. Uh, the thing is, when I tested out this scheme, I didn't know what I was going for, and I ended up putting a lot of layers on it more than necessary. Um, but at the end, I liked it, and so I had to copy it for the rest of the figures. So it's a bit repetitive, but um, you can probably skip a few steps here. And then next, we add in a bit more of the pale flesh color, and Again, we're going to be repeating this several times, a bit, uh, a few times too many in this particular case. But one thing you want to keep in mind when painting female figures is uh, less contrast is more. Uh, women tend to not have the same uh, muscle structure as uh, a man would. So you're not going to have, you know, ripped abs and bulging muscles. It's going to be much more curvy, which means you want less contrast. Um, men, you can, men figures, you can do, you know, really dark shade and work your all the way up to a really bright highlight. That will look bizarre on a female figure because they just don't have the same six-pack abs and you know, bulging veins on their arms. So uh, less is more in the case of a, a female figure like this. And again, we are adding more pale flesh to the previous mixture and working our way up. Again, it was a bit excessive on this figure. Um, the other issue when you're painting female figures is you want, usually you want them a bit more pale in uh, skin tone than men because uh, normally, not always of course, but normally uh, women are thought of to be more inside, you know, your princess type is going to be inside uh, castles. They're not going to get a lot of sunlight. Men are out on the battlefield. They're going to get much more uh, of a suntan from always being outside. Uh, women would not have that. But, of course, you have a warrior woman in fantasy games, so you can do that. But, in general, female figures tend to look better with paler skin tones because that's kind of what is expected. Um... I thought originally about doing a darker skin tone on these figures because they are supposed to be gladiator fighters. However, I just, as things progressed, I ended up with a much lighter skin tone, which works perfectly fine. Finally, we worked our way up to just using straight Vallejo color uh, 
game color, pale flesh. And one of the mistakes I made on this figure was I didn't determine exactly what my base color was. Usually I have to figure out or mentally tell myself, okay, this is the base color. All the previous colors before this were shades, and now I'm working on the highlights. I didn't do this, uh, do that for this figure because I didn't know going into it exactly how I want wanted to paint it. So the base color was actually one of those previous uh, rose brown pale flesh mixtures. I don't know exactly which uh, it was. Um, if I was painting more than 10 of these guys, I would have really thought about it and it would help to paint uh, more of them in the future. But by the time I settled on this paint scheme, I was already halfway done with the 10 man unit. So I kind of uh, just went with the flow. But uh, what we're working on right now is technically, according to the placement, would be uh, a highlight color. And finally, for the last step, we're just mixing in some white with the pale flesh, about a 50-50 mix, and just adding a few uh, highlights here at the top of the shoulders and on the fingers. Again, uh, with female figures, don't go too heavy on the contrast. Um, it's better off to be a bit more subtle. And I wanted this figure to be more pale than the rest of my Dark Elves, but again, I didn't go into it with the plan. Um, I just kind of stopped when I reached a happy step, which was here in this case. So it's a different tone than the rest of my Dark Elves. It is a bit more pale. Uh, it's not super white, which is, I didn't want super white anyway. Uh, but it works because they, they do stand out, subtly stand out from the rest of the army, which is uh, what I was going for. In order to not repeat myself, uh, for those who are watching this entire uh, series of videos. Uh, I'm going to skip over some of the stuff that's already been done in the painting shades video. Uh, in this case, painting all the blue violet clothing, which was covered there. Uh, short synopsis is starting with Vallejo model color violet, working way our way up to blue violet, and then adding a bit of game color wolf's gray for the highlights. The steel armor I painted slightly different. I just added a little bit of brown ink uh, to my black ink, which is something I've done in the past before, and I probably did it on this army. I just forgot at some point. Uh, but adding the brown ink just gives it a, a subtle brown hue. It adds just a bit more color to the armor, except just being silver and black. Um, if you want to do like really dirty armor, you just add more brown to it. And it's just adding a bit more color and just uh, a bit more, you know, cherry on the top type of look. Because of the large gold mask, I also used a slightly different wash on that as well. I used a out of production party color ink, which you cannot get anymore. However, you can make the same thing by mixing about 60% yellow ink with 40% brown. And what that does is the yellow ink adds a, an excellent depth and richness to the gold while the brown adds a little bit of shade and um, it's a really wonderful color I, I really like using it on gold and uh, once this is dry I just went back and added a bit more shade where necessary using straight brown ink the black was painted exactly the same way as it was on the shade just by highlighting twice uh, by adding some Vallejo color shadow gray final thing to paint on the figure was the whip and my second main color in the army is my game color uh, magic blue and I needed to work it into somewhere on the figure so I decided to put it on the whip uh, however I didn't want it the same I don't want an extremely bright blue whip because I thought that would look a little bit weird so I just started off I dry brushed three times started off with some game color stormy blue and then twice mixed in a little bit of magic blue and uh, dry brushed again, not working all the way up to just straight magic blue. So it, it's it's a darker blue essentially, but at least it still has some blue elements in it to help tie it to the rest of the army. And with that, we are done. 
And here we are, the Sisters of Slaughter are ready for the battlefield. And I think I did a good job tying their color scheme into the rest of the armor. Uh, initially, you'd think that'd be kind of hard to do because of all the flesh, and there's no other flesh tones. Uh, large amounts of flesh in the rest of the Dark Elf army. Uh, I wanted something slightly different but not too far off from the other figures and by using the the rose brown is a it's a very nice flush color it's a bit more pink um, but it's not too far off from what I used on the rest of the figure so they're slightly different but you can definitely they, they fit in with the rest of the army uh, especially with all the other colors helping to tie them in the purples uh, and the gold and I managed to work in a little bit of blue which I think works out but um, if you're following along at home I would suggest probably uh, skipping the first one or two steps of the flesh tone that I used to skip the shadow flesh rose brown mixture and either start with straight rose brown or uh, rose brown with a little bit of pale flesh mixed in with it um, I didn't know exactly where what color I wanted when I started these figures, so I used a lot of layers and just stopped when I was happy. Um, but the takeaway here is, remember, uh, female figures, A, they tend to look better with uh, lighter skin tones, and B, uh, they need less contrast than male figures due to less muscle definition, more, more curves. But uh, that's it, and um, we have another dark elf unit done and uh, stay tuned we'll have the next one very soon thanks for watching